Tonight we're in code blue. Blue jacket, shirt, jeans, blue tooth. No. And a blue... And I won't show you that either. You'll have to wait and see that tonight on Neotropolis. This is not business as usual. Welcome to Neotropolis. We are not business as usual. Hi, I'm your host, Jim Evans. The discussion about health care has been and will continue to be in the forefront for some time to come. This evening, we'll focus on a Northeast Ohio company that has developed a health care procedure that is producing positive results and growing an application. It may even help you or someone you know someday, if it hasn't already. And when you see what it does and how it works, you may say, wow, that's a pretty cool idea. So relax in the waiting room. Now we take a look at regional business news from the Neotropolis Good Business News Aggregator. This is the Good Business News along the I-77 corridor for the week of June 20th. Tuesday's Cleveland Plain Dealer front page reports that Cleveland-based Sherwin-Williams was awarded the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency's Green Chemistry Challenge Award for its water-based oil paint. The award was only one of five given out this year. Tuesday's Akron Beacon Journal community section reports that construction will begin this fall on a Marriott Residence Inn Hotel in the Montrose area. The new extended stay hotel will be near State Route 18 and Interstate 77 and within walking distance of the Crystal Clinic and Akron General Wellness Center. The $11 million project is expected to be completed in 12 months. Tuesday's Akron Beacon Journal business section reports that nearly 146,000 passengers traveled to and from the Akron Canton Airport during the month of May, up 8% from last May, making this the airport's busiest May ever. Wednesday's Cleveland Plain Dealer business section reports that Cutler Real Estate, the largest locally owned real estate firm in Northeast Ohio established in 1947, is absorbing Remax Legacy. The move will allow Cutler to expand into Hudson and the northern Summit County area. Wednesday's Akron Beacon Journal front page reports that the city of Kent and Kent State University are working together to expand a walkway from the campus into the heart of the city's $100 million downtown redevelopment area. The connection between the university and city is expected to turn downtown Kent into a mecca for students, residents, and visitors. Thursday's Cleveland Plain Dealer business section reports that Columbus-based Huntington Bank is ahead of schedule in opening 18 branches this year in Giant Eagle stores in Greater Cleveland. The bank has hired 77 people this year and plans to add 300 jobs and 45 branches throughout Northeast Ohio by 2015. Thursday's Akron Beacon Journal business section reports that the Akron-based Austin Bioinnovation Institute, a partnership of Akron's three hospital systems, the University of Akron and Northeast Ohio's Medical School, have launched a new initiative that establishes a network of doctors and hospitals that share responsibility for providing care to patients. The initiative, called Accountable Care Community, or ACO, is designed to improve promotion, access, and delivery of health care to area residents. This is the good business news along the I-77 corridor for this week. Neotropolis is your source for good business news. We all know about the importance of having the proper nutrients for optimum health. That, of course, includes iron, which can be attained from, among other things, red meat, dark leafy greens, beans, magnets. Well, yeah, in a different way in certain scenarios. But don't eat any, especially the ones on your refrigerator. I tried that. Not good. We'll show you what it's all about in a few moments. Right now, though, we connect with our content partner, the Business Journal. It's time for the Weekly Buzz. I'm Stacia Ertis with the Business Journal Weekly Buzz for Youngstown and the Mahoning Valley. Another step forward for new housing and retail shops in downtown Youngstown. Council passed legislation to allow the Board of Control to enter into an agreement with developer Dominic Marchionda, who wants to convert the Erie Terminal Building into housing for Youngstown State University students. It includes a $2 million float loan for 12 months, a waiver of all water tapping and building permit fees, and a $350,000 water utility grant to help with the $8.4 million renovation. Marchionda says he already has commitments for a coffee shop, deli, and 
and pub on the first floor. Lawmakers are getting behind Patriot Water Treatment in Warren, which treats wastewater from natural gas extraction in the Marcella Shale. The company was recently informed the Ohio EPA would not be renewing permits, but lawmakers are supporting Patriot's effort to change that. I, I have to believe that it's just been some communication breakdowns and issues. So I think on a bipartisan basis, we're all very committed to sitting down with the administration and getting that result and getting uh, the permit back in place. As construction continues on a new $650 million pipe mill for VNM Star, more construction and jobs could be on the way. Youngstown's finance director says we should know in the next few months if VNM will also build a new $250 million melt shop next door. Youngstown company DRS will manage a new data center outside of Columbus that could one day become a template for a similar project here in the Mahoning Valley. Ground was broken for the 16,000 square foot WeConnect Community Data Center in Westerville. Internet and cloud computing carriers will set up shop there, creating a competitive environment, helping to lower costs while giving small to medium sized businesses in the community affordable access to the services. The J.P. Morgan Chase Foundation is stepping up with funding for the Regional Chamber's REACH program. The foundation has awarded $20,000 to the Chamber for the program, which helps individuals starting or expanding their businesses and was among the programs impacted by the loss of federal funding. A big gift and a new name for the Mahoning Valley's History Center. Past board member and past president Jean Dibel Tyler gave $700,000 to the Historical Society, which will honor her by naming its new home the Tyler Mahoning Valley History Center. $4.5 million of the $6 million goal has been raised for the huge renovation underway at the Burke Building downtown, the original home of the Good Humor Ice Cream Bar. And those are this week's headlines. Be sure to check out the Buzz Newscast every business day online at businessjournaldaily.com. I'm Stacia Ertis. We'll see you next week. And now it's time for a Neotropolis fact. Did you know that Northeast Ohio has grown the biomedical industry by 37% in the last five years, outpacing growth in the U.S.? It seems that on a fairly regular basis now, we hear about advancements in medicine. There are exciting things going on for better and new treatments and procedures for patient care. And a small company in Youngstown just happens to be involved in doing just that. Synchro Medical Innovations has developed and continues to refine a device that addresses a special need. Their Bluetooth magnetically guided feeding tube is proving to be an efficient and successful instrument in delivering vital nutrition to critically ill patients regionally and beyond. I had the opportunity to get a closer look and here's what it's about. Synchro Medical Innovations evolved from a concept developed by a Georgia physician. Recognizing that there was a need to better deliver nutrients to critically ill patients, Dr. Sabre Gabriel placed a premium on specific placement in the use of feeding tubes in this scenario. To achieve this, he implemented the use of simple magnets in creating the blue tube. Dr. Gabriel got FDA approval on this device in 2002, after which Youngstown native Gary Wakefield entered the picture. I was approached by a venture capital group saying we're looking at this little company called Synchro Medical. We'd like your input on whether or not you think it's a worthwhile market. So I did about three or four weeks worth of due diligence. I got back to them and told them I definitely agreed there was a strong need for this type of product in the marketplace. And at that point, they asked if I would get involved as president if they purchased the company. And I was happy to do so. I was very flattered by that. My one stipulation to them, though, was that only if I could move the company to northeastern Ohio. You know, I'm born and raised here. I've never left. I refuse to leave. Uh, and fortunately, they, they looked at the greater Ohio market uh, and everything that the state and the, the city had to offer, and, and they gave me their blessing to do so. The largest patient we've done was 713 pounds. With his strong background in the medical device industry, Wakefield settled the company in downtown Yardstown in July of 2007. Since then, it's been small but calculated steps. They now operate with a staff of a half dozen, but also have 20 field representatives who work with independent dealers which carry the product. Synchro has developed relationships with 50-plus hospitals, including solicitations from several other countries. And they also have another very special relationship here in our country. We've had $2.1 million in grants awarded to Synchro Medical by the Department of Defense 
And I personally am very, very proud of the role that the blue tube has played in saving the soldiers that are unfortunately uh, being burned severely from these incendiary devices that, that they uh, are faced with both in Afghanistan and Iraq. Uh, the Brook Army Medical Center is kind of the premier burn unit in the United States and I think most people acknowledge that and they have used our technology from day one. That's one of the things that certainly makes this company unique. So how about the technique and just how it works? As it goes into the stomach it naturally, because of the bend of the esophagus, takes this left-handed curve, and it just keeps going until it hits and then it catches. And it start, you can see it's just bunching up and twisting around. It's actually going in the wrong direction. Right. The tube wants to go this way, but we've got to get it all the way over here to this pyloric sphincter and then into the small bowel. So again, we just use magnets to make that very simple. Here's the external magnet. It's just handheld. It weighs about five pounds. But it's very strong. It measures 300 gauss, which is magnetic field strength, at four inches. So by placing this on the patient just below the, the sternum and holding it there, as we advance this tube, as we advance the tube into the stomach, it's captured by the magnet. And when it's captured, that light turns on. So now the clinician knows they have it. And then they simply move the magnet in the direction of the small bow. And you can see that tube is now following the magnet and doing exactly what we want it to go to do and going exactly where we want it to go. So as you saw earlier, without the magnet, it goes over here and bunches up. With the magnet, it's pulled directly in the direction that we want it to go and just very easily and simply gets into the small bow. Not medical business as usual. The Synchro Blue Tube gives clinicians an 80% success rate in achieving small bowel placement on the first attempt with an average time of 20 minutes. Conversely, the conventional method can take much longer with three to four attempts. And that's crucial in terms of the time element because 2% of the time a feeding tube ends up in the lung and not the stomach. So you have to take an x-ray before you can start feeding to ensure the tube is where it's supposed to be. Again, it's a simple idea that works. And continued validation is key. And to help achieve that, Synchro has cultivated another important relationship as they enhance their product. Now, we've been working with uh, the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center over in Pittsburgh, and one of the things that they had showed to us was they said, you know, this is a really good idea. We will support it. We'll help you do clinical studies to validate that this really is a, a very good a small bowel feeding tube. Here's the results that we got in our study. You know, Through further testing, the hospital suggested that the handheld magnet be placed behind the patient's neck. This will allow the tube to be maneuvered beyond the trachea safely. Gary says that data shows that nearly 5,000 people die in U.S. hospitals each year from misplacement of feeding tubes. This procedure can help reduce that number significantly, which of course is a primary goal. And along with that, there's potential for substantial cost reduction with fewer x-rays required as a result of accurate placement. The actual gold standard that a lot of hospitals use is they advance it to 35 centimeters, stop and take a chest x-ray to make sure that they're safely beyond the trachea, and then they go back and reinsert the tube either into the, the stomach or deeper into the small bowel. Then they go back and take a second x-ray to confirm where they're at. Now, if you do the math, that basically means there's 8 million x-rays that have to be taken every year for these um, disposable feeding tubes that are placed. At a very conservative cost of $150 per x-ray, that's over a billion dollars a year. Committed to Northeast Ohio, Gary is very confident that Synchro Medical can thrive in this region. That would be part of a growing medical device corridor being championed by Bio Enterprise in Cleveland, which has been very instrumental in helping this company move forward. And they basically, they work with companies like myself to help ensure that we're successful, they help us with all aspects of business. They put me in touch with people that can help me with R&D. They've put me in touch with people that can help me do the manufacturing on a local basis, which we're in the final stages of moving manufacturing from Dresden, Germany to Milford, Ohio. Um, they've put me in touch with a lot of different uh, just experts that can help me with marketing, with R&D, with the, the whole gamut of challenges that you face uh, with a startup company. For all of these device firms, especially ones that are at the point where they are starting to sell into the marketplace as Gary's firm is, that's when you really see inflection in job growth in, in our industry. When things are still in technical development or proof of concept from a clinical perspective, the teams are relatively small. 
but as they take their product to market and as, market, as the product gets adopted, you start to see a growth in both manufacturing jobs as well as sales jobs, service jobs, and the broader corporate structure. Milford is home to Interplex Medical, which specializes in medical device manufacturing. It's a good landing point to get the Bluetooth made here in the U.S. And certainly the ultimate goal is to have the entire operation closer to home, which will further benefit the region. And, you know, I hope that at one point in time, you know, we'll have manufacturing here, which will, which will bring additional jobs. You know, I'd like to get our logistics here for right now. We're still doing our shipping and receiving a product out of Florida. You know, the potential exists to bring that here. And the potential exists to partner with a much larger company that, can re that really has the resources to do this right. You know, when, when you're talking about someone like Synchro Medical, obviously, you know, our resources are limited. And if you can partner with somebody with, who has a lot more resources and much deeper pockets, then you can have a greater impact on, on the marketplace. Synchro Medical is not without competition, but they remain as the only company with this device that incorporates the use of magnets. Wakefield says they also will introduce a pediatric version of the blue tube, which he feels has even bigger market potential. So as they continue to refine the product and application, Synchro Medical also has definite potential to have impact on this industry. The next challenge that we're looking at is I believe that the magnetic technology will prove itself to be very safe in terms of eliminating the potential for a tube to go into the lung. But I don't think that in itself will be enough. I think that we also will have to have some device to put in the clinician's hand that will positively confirm that the tube is either in the stomach or the small bowel. Once we have both of those, then I think we have a very legitimate shot at eliminating the need for the x-rays. It's a brilliant but simple innovation, and it's those types of innovations that typically tend to take off in any sector, but especially in medicine. In economic development, there's a lot of theory around clusters. The, the more entrepreneurs that are there, the more entrepreneurs that will be attracted there. The more innovation that occurs, the more innovation that migrates there. And that's what we've been able to develop over the last 10 years here in Northeast Ohio is a real strong medical technology cluster that's now drawing in companies and innovators and investors from all around the country and the world. Good chance we'll hear a lot more about the blue tube in future medical news. And with that, it's time now for Into the Future. Into the Future. I am Sebastian Kanakanaj, Professor Emeritus of the University of Akron. I am Chairman and CEO of United Polymer Technology, located in Akron Global Business Accelerator. We specialize in color change technology, color change polymers, color change inks, laser inks, paper, and fabrics. Among the consumer items are color change candles, color change toys, color change t-shirts, and flameless clear gel candles. Color change is affected by stimulus such as heat, light, water, moisture, electricity, pressure, or combination of these. Coloration as well as erasure by light, heat, water, and electricity is also our unique technology. Controlled and timed release and timed coloration, piezoluminescence or spark in the dark are within our technology. In the biomedical area, we have developed artificial spine disc, stent balloon, patented cancer prophylactic, waiting for funds for FDA application. We custom develop products such as heat stable photochromic lenses reusable paper, uh, color changing toothbrush, and color changing hand wash soap. Our latest invention is the low cost electrochromic smart window to reduce the cost of energy of heating houses and buildings. 330-714-6059, www.crystalglow.net. Thank you. You know we like to give you the rundown on the financial field, and the experts at NCA Financial Planners give us a look at that now with a stock wrap. This week's local company stock spotlight is Invacare. 
Invicare is a global leader in the home and long-term care industries. This local company manufactures a range of products, from innovative patient beds, mobility devices, and everyday in-home personal care products. Invicare strives to push the evolution of in-home care to further the abilities and lives of their clients. Today, with the world's broadest product offerings, Invicare serves more than 25,000 independent home medical equipment and long-term care providers. Invicare began in the late 1970s. At that time, Technicare, a Cleveland-based medical device manufacturer, was purchased by Johnson & Johnson. Johnson & Johnson decided to sell the wheelchair division known as Invicare. Today, Invicare continues to stick to their roots and manufactures wheelchairs and other mobility devices in their diverse product line. Invicare is headquartered in Elyria and trades under the symbol IVC on the New York Stock Exchange. The midweek close was $33.49. Year-to-date, the stock is positive 11.04%, and over the last five years, the stock is positive 56.8%. Back to you, Jim. Thanks. Well, you know, many of you are pulled to culture and entertainment in Northeast Ohio. We have the guy who is the magnet on that. Cool Cleveland's Thomas Mulready joins us now to tell you about some other events that are going on in Neotropolis this weekend. What we're talking about is the business of fun. Hey, it's Thomas Mulready from CoolCleveland.com. And this week, we want to continue turning you on to some of the great farmers markets that we have all throughout Northeast Ohio. It's a great place to get the freshest food available. It's often cheaper as well. And what's nice about a lot of these farmers markets, as you can see, and we're here in Lakewood at their weekly leaf farmers market on Wednesdays, you can see that it becomes a real community event and everybody starts to share recipes. They start to share any kind of items that they may have a little too much of. So it becomes a real community effort and, and a real social event. Um, and they're really throughout the entire region. For example, in Summit County, the Countryside Farmers Market at Highland Square is on Wednesdays from 4 to 7. Uh, in Lorain County, the Wellington Farmers Market, Saturdays, 9 to 1. And in Cuyahoga County, the North Union Farmers Market, of course, they have a lot of these North Union Farmers Markets throughout the entire county. Uh, there's one at the Cleveland Clinic, believe it or not. It's uh, around lunchtime, 1030 to 130 on Wednesdays, which is very convenient for all the folks that work there, the thousands of people that work at the Cleveland Clinic. Uh, also, the Broadway Farmers Market on Mondays from 4 to 7. And Gordon Square now has a Farmers Market Saturdays from 10 to 2. And in Stark County, uh, the Hartville Marketplace on Mondays, Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays from 9 to 5, they run that all straight through the year, not just in the summer. So check out your local farmers markets all throughout the region. This is Thomas Mulready from CoolCleveland.com. Have a great week in Neotropolis. Well, thanks for joining us. And as we leave you, remember, there are things that you can do to help the Northeast Ohio economy. One way is to get out to any of the events Thomas told us about and make your investment in fun. You can also position yourself out there and make your brilliant comments about the Northeast Ohio economy to the people who are looking for the blue tube on YouTube and tell them to spread the word. Also, remember to log on to our website, neotropolis.org, and tell us what you think. I'm Jim Evans. We'll see you next week on Neotropolis, not business as usual. Funding for Neotropolis has been provided by the Burton D. Morgan Foundation, committed to the free enterprise system. First Place Bank is proud to sponsor Neotropolis. As a community bank, First Place Bank believes we are only as strong as the communities we serve. Locally owned businesses are the cornerstone of our communities. We concentrate on helping local businesses make the most of their resources through a variety of services delivered with a community banking touch. The Dominion Foundation. Jumpstart, working with entrepreneurs to accelerate the growth of their high potential businesses to create a more prosperous economic future for Northeast Ohio. Youngstown Business Incubator. And Nortec. Next week on Neotropolis, more buzz, stock wrap, and into the future. Find out who is not doing business as usual. Now stay tuned for Newsnight.